we see the world in color, and great artists strive to capture its variety and subtlety. They know that certain colors work so well together. A boat on a lake by Renoir, crabs by Van Gogh. In both, it's the contrast between oranges and blues and greens that makes them so beautiful. But for many hundreds of years, artists struggled to recreate the colors they saw in the natural world all around them. Colour could be difficult, it was hard, it was not easy to achieve. We see colour all around us and we think of it as being an easy thing. We go, to a, uh, we go to a hardware shop, we see it on our screens. It wasn't straightforward for most of the painters in our collection to find the colours they wished to create their dazzling effects in paint. Artists looked for colours in weird and wonderful places. Red, the colour of love and blood and passion, often came from crushed beetles and tree bark. This is an exhibition of Western paintings, but European art did not exist in a vacuum. For centuries, the richest and purest form of blue came from what is today Afghanistan, and this stone, lapis lazuli. So precious and desirable was the blue that came from lapis lazuli that the stone was more expensive than gold. The stones were traded, taken to Baghdad, Aleppo, and then by ship to Venice and Genoa, where they were ground down and mixed with wax and gum to make this powder. But Europeans discovered alternatives, mixing chemicals at high temperatures to make new pigments, used here by Monet in the late 1800s to capture all the subtle shades of snow. Colors can fade and dim over time. They can change in different light, and each of us may see the same colour in a different way because our eyesight is unique and so are our perceptions and memories. But out of this variety comes inspiration and enduring beauty. Barnaby Phillips, Al Jazeera at the National Gallery in London.